All right, we are here. Another episode of the One Percent Club. Hopefully, we're going to get this up to two, three percent one of these days. And we're moving to um, also talking on the Digger Warriors channel. And hope you guys are doing well. And we have a lot of good things coming up in the next few weeks. Talking about different types of things I'm going to try. As far as I'm even go may, may even do a live stream at some point uh, once I get more comfortable and more. Uh, viewers that are interested, we'll do we'll do some of that. And so, excuse me, and actually go ahead and do some scri subscriptions and and focus on those type of things as time goes on as well. And I'll probably do some highlighting of um, maybe movies even or different types of things where I see the the masculine masculine aura. All right, so I saw a very interesting video here, and this is by Motif Hollick, and I'll put it in the link. But we're talking about the world we're in right now. And this is an interesting one because I'm going to term this one. Are you in a digital prison? So before we do anything, subscribe, like, comment, and uh, donate. And uh, let's get into this one. So digital prison. So as time has gone on, we have been caught in, in a world that we may not even recognize ourselves. For example, when I teach a class, I'll talk about communications and I'll say, you know, guys, let's put our phones down for a while, put them in this box and we'll give them to you after class. Well, most people cannot hold off on their phone for more than two, three minutes. And they've got to have that phone back. People have become so addicted to the technology, to all those things that people thought were conveniences. And this video does a nice job of indicating, and I totally agree, is that these things, even though they're meant to help, they're actually hurting us and putting us in this box, in this prison, that we're choosing not to get out. And this is affecting us all the way through the line. And this actually then goes into the whole idea of retention. So let's kind of follow through this a little bit. So as we see our daily activities, and I'm doing this on the phone, we have the computer out all day long. You may have all kinds of technology, all the things you're watching. So instead of having a television set in the front room, like the old days, where you'd have to walk three or four rooms to see something, all you're doing is being inundated by visual pictures and technology. To the brain, that becomes something that just is addictive in pattern. And you get used to that feeling, and you'll get some dopamine from that feeling as well. That becomes highly attractive. And now, you're doing everything you can to upgrade your phone, upgrade your computers, upgrade this, and all of a sudden, now you're almost to the point where it's taken you over. And we talk about this whole idea of the digital world. We're becoming more immersed into an automated world. Now, is this good or bad? I will argue that right now it's not a good thing. And when we look at government and you look at all the things that are happening with around us, you're looking at all the temptation that's provided. We look at everything. It's almost like a big theater going on, okay? A big theater that people are playing their roles, okay? And in many cases, and I'll make a note here, is you're basically kind of, as a person, falling into that prison of your own making because you can't control it. And so because you're addicted to the phone or you're addicted to the computer, all of a sudden now, this becomes your world. And what I think people who are making tons of money off of this want you to do is they basically want you to become this 3D person in this world. That the world is not real except what you have on the computer or your phone. 
and it's a very difficult thing to break through, we can choose to do that. We can choose to vote people in and out of office. We can choose to go ahead and you know, put away our credit cards. We could choose to go ahead and, and put away our phones. But most people choose not to do that. And so what you're doing is creating a world that is an illusionary world around you. And that world is focusing on something that is not really real. It's fantasy. Which is why people like it. Because they don't have to deal with the reality which they struggle with, a lot of people. Because it doesn't always turn out well and they're struggling with it. And so the theater they want to deal with is all make-believe, illusionary. And so we live in this digital illusionary world and it's almost like we have become a prisoner. Now, you can't see much more proof of that than the whole idea of pornography. I mean, this whole idea of thinking of an image and releasing energy of something that's not real, a picture. And I would say sometimes go on these TikToks and look at how there's a couple out there that just astonishing. That women, when they first start how they look, and then when they got makeup on, it's like that nine day. But it's an illusion, gang. It's an illusion. I mean, the way people run society is an illusion. It goes back to this matrix. You're either taking a blue pill or a red pill. Most of us are t most people are taking a blue pill. They continue to allow technology to run their lives. Instead of saying, I'm going to stop with this phone. I'm going to start I'm going to stop charging things on my credit card. They lose control and so they're trapped in a prison and they can't get themselves out because they don't believe they can get out. It's almost like the experiments they used to do. I remember this experiment very well. They had a bunch of, uh, I think, lightning bugs. And they caught him in this um, uh, this jar. And they hold in a jar so they could still breathe and everything. But they kept him in the jar. And, and they would keep coming up and hitting their head on top of the, the lid that was on the jar. Well, after a while, they went down to the bottom and never came back up. And the person opened the jar and they never came up. They had given up on the idea that they could not go that way anymore. And this is the way we are. We put ourselves in this prison and we believe we can't get out. And so instead of trying to get out and trying to put that phone away and trying to do this and trying to say no, trying to stand up for yourself, you're not able to do that because your mind has programmed yourself to say, I can't win this. I can't do this. I'm going to take negative consequences. I'm going to hit my head on the top of the lid of the jar. And so that's why, guys, we are caught in our own prison. And it's called a digital prison, but it's still a prison. And we got to think ourselves that there is no prison here. It's a prison of our own making. We don't have to watch all these shows. We don't have to do what other people are doing. And we don't have to be controlled by this idea of the digital world, automation, that's coming to help us. Now those things, like anything else, are tools. They should be used as tools, just like money. Used as tools. Not to be used to control what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. All I can do, you can see it all day long. I see it in my classes. I see it in people. All they do is focus on their phone all day long. They're bored, so instead of thinking and thinking about things or meditating, they sit there and spend all day on the phone playing games and doing all kinds of stuff. It's like it's attached to them. And this is becoming worse and worse all the time. That's why I say that the people are not even realizing the type of prison they're putting themselves in. And I remember cases where people rather have a phone and instead of having food. 
it becomes such a strong impulse that the person doesn't want to leave this because it's almost attached to them. And don't think that these companies don't realize that. They realize it. So that's why we have to make a stand to say, I'm getting rid of the credit cards. I'm getting rid of all this excess stuff I don't need. As you're on your retention more, and as you become closer to God and not all these images and things you're seeing in this media and all the digital world we have, the less wants you will have, which means you don't need all these things and therefore you're not going to be a uh, slave to these type of things. You're going to be more of a positive force that's going to stand up for yourself. And I think that's that's a key type of thing. So put away your credit cards. Put away your phone, right? Don't use your phone often. Try not to use these things as much as you can. And once again, you'll see a huge difference in your life. Now, I'm not saying necessarily throw these things away. But remember, the more you allow this to take a part of your life, the less control you have. And the whole idea is that you want to have control because that's how you become the best person you can become. And God has given me the power to say, no, I'm not going to go ahead and use this phone. I don't need this phone to use this 24 hours a day. Okay, I only need it for certain types of things. So again, the question is, and you have to ask yourself this, guys, are you currently in your own digital prison? If you are, you need to take some steps to start moving away from that. Because that digital prison is going to lead you back to relapsing, re lack of retention, and back to lack of control. And that's the last thing you want to do, especially as you start your journey. All right, guys. Until next time, battle on.